Friends Podcast. Hi, I'm Diane Hunt. I am an Impressionist Realist Painter connecting with nature through my brush. I work in oil paint and watercolor and I live in the countryside of Maryland's eastern shore, not far from the Chesapeake Bay. You can find me online at dianehuntstudio.com and on Facebook and Instagram at Diane Hunt Studio. Hi, I'm Constance Brosnan of Steve Brosnan's Jewelry Designs. I live in Oklahoma on a prairie, and I make uh, handmade jewelry in silver, copper, and brass. I'm an artist that paints. I paint pastels and in oil sometimes. Hello, this is Clyde JKL. I'm the host of this podcast. I am a emerging representational artist. I do historic rend- renderings, seascapes, landscapes, botanicals, birds, and whatnot. The tight illustrative hand and watercolor, tin and ink, and acrylic paints. And I live in Oklahoma City. It's Monday, October the 21st, 2019. This is episode 18 of the Artist Friends Podcast, and this is Clyde J. Kale, and I am here with Diane Hunt and Constance Bronson, and hello, Diane. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Constance. Hi, everyone. Hello, Constance. Hi, Clyde. Hi, Diane. Hello, everybody. All right. It is good to you to uh, join me, keep me from... Uh, being a lonely, crazy person talking to myself on a microphone here. <laughs> when I record my other podcasts for, for my uh, other, my internet radio station, but I feel like a, like a uh, insane person, like I'm talking to myself. <laughs> it's, that's the, na- the nature of uh, creating podcasts and the, the radio work. All right. The videos, the theme for this week's podcast was the odd man out or maverick artists or rebel artists and a couple of them that i picked was the first artist was a uh, a uh, philip philip guston guston yes philip guston yes yes i'd never heard of him before and i came across his video and it was you know the video was really interesting talking about uh you know, his he was the a protege of uh, Jackson Pollock and Andy Warhol, all those folks. You know, in the fifties, he was you know with in the abstract uh, expressionist movement. You know, and uh, was uh, uh, very in the crowd. And then when he shifted his career, when he changed his style of art, it's like they excommunicated him. They kicked him out. Yeah, and everything, and, and I never cared for his early art, but I did. I did like his later work. You know, they said it was too cartoon-like and everything. So, did, did you two get a chance to watch that video? I, I saw only a little bit of it. I didn't get to watch the whole thing, but I saw they like he was talking about how um, back then the um, powers that be or whatever. They were so cut and dry as far as like who was who was an official artist and who wasn't. Like if you didn't fit in their parameters, whatever they dictated they would be, then you were no good. Like <laughs> it was like either you were or you weren't. And I can remember being like that, like when I was in, especially when I first started college. Um, it was very much like that uh, between, especially between like the um, abstract artists and the realist artists. It was very yeah. much like that. 
Wow. It was very, um, I mean, it was like you didn't even speak to one another. I mean, it was like really cutthroat. Wow. It was huh. strange, strange time. <laughs> what, impre what impressed me was the odd man out, uh, kind of like he was a rebel because he didn't care that he, they wouldn't even talk to him. He didn't care. He didn't seem to care. He went ahead and pursued doing the kind of art that he wanted to do. And, and that alone, that impressed me, you know, and, and, you know, his later style was, was kind of like more cartoon like, but it was really, really autobiographical. I mean, he was pulling from things that had happened in his life. Yeah, you know, and everything, and 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 it also uh, they said his art was uh, uh, it was kind of like it was satire. It was like making fun of the art market, making fun of the critics because he was in mm -hmm. incorporating them into in his art. Yeah, you know? <laughs> I'm wondering how well he did financially. Like, was he able to sell the pieces he was making for any decent money, or was he or was he like ostracized from all the galleries and stuff? Well, they said that in the in the video when he first started his uh, his new style, his first show was all of his former collectors and curators and the guy they were all shaking their heads. What is going on? What has happened? And they were just <laughs> amazed. And he he did. He struggled for a while, and he lost his collectors. They, did, they didn't mm -hmm. want any more of this new work. But then later on, uh, some uh, new collectors, you know, came about. And also the younger generation seemed to help him because they learned to, uh, they had an appreciation for his art. And this started getting gal more galleries interested than near the end of his death because he passed away in like in the 19, I think the 1980s, you know, sometime. And, uh, he was starting to, to gain more, a, a new following, mm -hmm. a, a further appreciation. But he probably went for years without. But he much. went, yeah, he, <laughs> yeah. He went from the from the. I guess he peaked like in the seventies, uh, you know, and with his abstract, you know, style. And then when he came out with a new style, it just for about twenty years there. I guess he, you know, didn't. Uh, he, he, you know, his art died off. And he. Mm -hmm. he didn't, you know, didn't make you make, which is why he has the title of, you know, odd man out, you know, because he didn't care. He really yeah. didn't yeah. care. He was, you know, in, in it for the art, you know. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that you have to follow your own path. I mean, you have to do, you know, you have to paint what you want to paint. I'm a firm believer in that. May not be the popular thing, but you have to do, like you said, be the odd man out, you know, and, you have and to it, paint what makes you happy. In our, you know, in our previous podcast, you know, we've talked about this, that, that mm -hmm. the create what is, uh, what is in your heart, you know, don't try mm -hmm. to uh, uh, cater to the market, you know, and, and mm -hmm. this is a, you know, this is a good example, you know. Yeah, and it's hard. It's hard when you get pressure from other people that are you know, maybe more renowned than you are or um, think they know more than you do or, you know, like a curator, yeah. of, like a famous curator of a big museum or something and they say something about your work. It, it's really hard to stay on on that right. path of your own and not yeah. be swayed by what they're telling you you should be doing. Or um, I, I can remember when I first went to college, my I started out as a sculpture major and I had done quite a bit of sculpture in high school, but everything I did was more realistic. So I wanted to major in sculpture when I went to college. I clashed so bad with the head of the department, I changed my major. Wow. She was all into abstract stuff, and she would not let me create anything realistic. Huh. Oh, that's awful. I ended up dropping out of her classes and just, you know, changing my major. I, didn't, I don't that's even think I was in there like a month. That's terrible. I I changed. Yeah. So it's like, you know, but there's, that's awful. There's pressure I mean, from people that think their way is the only way. And yeah, they're not, um, especially back then that was in the seventies. Yeah. And did things were not, disservice. they were not flexible at all. And it was really, um, 
you know, that's, that's what I was saying earlier. You, I mean, it was a very tangible <laughs> difference between the realistic type, you know, impressionistic, realistic mm -hmm. people and the abstract people. I mean, it was like there was a wall between, I mean, that we didn't speak to one another. No, like nobody, it was just really strange. I don't know. It was, it was I was not expecting that at all when I went there. But um, after that, I didn't have any problems with any of the other teachers I had, but it was that just that one, that one, she was the head of the department too. So it was like, <laughs> I knew I wasn't well, going to get anywhere. Something <laughs> I've, that I've noticed is, no. is that we even, we've even had to uh, change the language because uh, before, I remember the whole time when I was young, you know, and really enthused and, 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 and into art, you know. Uh, f there was figurative art, and it was called traditional art. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then after I, uh, uh, you know, when I took Paul Klein's course, <laughs> you know, and he got me, and we started talking about, he said, you've got to learn to speak art. And I was like, what you know and he that he gave that lecture that night you know he's talking about you know it's an art speak representational emerging and you know, all these terms of which i had never heard of before you know i said representation well yeah anything that's not abstract or modern art is called representational because it represents something it may be you know it may not be a, a completed realistic but it, a bird, but if it looks something like a bird, okay, it's representational. <laughs> and it got me thinking about, you know, with what's going on, you know, with the, the different kinds of art, you know, that uh, we've had to change our language, you know, since, mm -hmm. you know, back then. Which leads me to the next video, which I know you guys said you didn't get a chance to watch because I, I think I messed up the link. It was a Jeff Coombs, about Jeff Coombs. Now, the only reason why I mentioned Jeff Coombs Personally, I don't like his art at all. I don't like well, any of it's his not for It's not for everybody, yeah. no. <laughs> but the reason why I mentioned Jeff Koons as an, a rebel or an odd man out or a maverick is because I think he could sell a refrigerator to an Eskimo. <laughs> <laughs> the man yeah. has – he has – he has made it in the art world and made his career because he is a hell of a salesman. I mean, when I'm watching a video and I'm hearing him talking, if I was in front of him personally, and after I got done hearing him talk, my first question with him would be, do you ever listen to yourself? I mean, he's so full of bull crap. It's incredible. <laughs> I took a Corsaria course, and I one of the people we studied was him. And I forget, I watched some of the the footage on him, but it's been a little while since I watched the footage. But uh, his sculptures were something else. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, the giant looks like mylar balloons, but you know they're made out of metal and highly polished, you know, and everything. They're really so see, they're, he was in the sculpt. He was in the. He went to the same college I did. He was there, my my first year was his last year, I think. And that's the kind of art they were, he was in the sculpture department. That's where I was. So that's, that's the, the kind, kind of stuff art they, they were, were doing. Oh, yeah. my God. And that was not at all what I was doing. So I didn't fit in. Yeah, but she should, have, she should have but been I, able to I teach you whatever him. you wanted to learn. You know what I'm saying? I wish I'd known him well enough. I could have followed him as far as, you know, <laughs> yeah. on how to market. <laughs> But, I mean, he was nobody then. I mean, he wasn't, you know. Yeah. But. but still, she should have been able to teach you. I mean, they should have been teaching you the whole circle of stuff, not yeah. just exactly. one portion. But, see, that's yeah. how it was back then. That's what we were yeah. saying. Like, the, the whole abstract good. the whole abstract thing was, like, you know, in its heyday. It swing, yeah, it, it was. And that's yep. where their, the, the department was at. That's They were all in, involved in that. And well, that. well, that's like in, uh, you know, in, in high school art class. You know, I they, probably we would went, have loved it. We went through and through <laughs> the different. I didn't get to go there. <laughs> they, the art, I was very fortunate. We had an art teacher who was, you know, taught us. We, we studied different, different styles, different met methods of art. And when we got into the abstract section, uh, 
I got kicked out of the class. <laughs> and I was banned from the class for three days. The reason why, yeah, an abstract class. And the reason why is because when I was bossing all the other students, no, 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 don't go that way. You shouldn't be doing it that way. No, this is the way. <laughs> I was telling the other students their abstract was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> because I have no sense of I can't do abstract art and it makes no sense to me because in my mind when I when I create a piece of artwork whatever and even if I look at a photo for reference I usually got it all planned out in my head I got the brush strokes I got the pin marks I've got the color I got everything all planned out in my head and then of course the 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 task is to translate what's in my mind through my fingers and onto the paper or canvas, you know. With abstract art, I can't do it because my mind does not think in abstract. <laughs> I used to go to the junior college and I used to take um, oil painting classes and drawing classes, but they never, I never went to a college where they had other classes like that. And then I used to go with a friend of mine to her college and I would take, I wouldn't actually sign up for the class. I would just go with her and sit and work in her class with her and just sort of, just sort of, you know, cheat along in the class to shoot, sneak me in so I could, cause I was always so poor, you know, <laughs> I couldn't afford to pay for school. So she would let me sneak in and her teacher would let me sneak in whenever, every once in a while when I could go. And I would take classes like that, you know. When uh, when I was in the military uh, overseas, they have a uh, had an education center and where you could you know take college courses from the, from different universities that were represented there. And uh, you could also, if you wanted to just take the class, but you wasn't concerned about getting credit, you know, academic credits, you could take what is, they called it a, a monitoring. And it was a like instead of the class normally costing sixty dollars or whatever per credit, it would cost you like fifteen dollars. That's all they would charge, you know. And so I took several art classes. You know, I was always taking an art class, but I didn't, you know, take it for the credit. I just took it for the benefit of being in the class and the benefit, of, you know, of it. And, and that's the extent of my college in art. I mean, <laughs> what I took for uh, for credit was, you know, computer technology classes and business management and whatnot, you know. And then I still didn't complete it, though. But I always said I have a college education. I just didn't get the final credit for it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, I took lots of classes I didn't get credit for. But then I, later on in life, when I was able to pay for it, I wouldn't took all the all the art classes I could take take and pay for and got credit for them. <laughs> well, nowadays there's so much available, you know, with the internet and everything, and and this these videos that he talks about, you know, odd men out rebels. Now, basically, if you're if you're not a rebel, if you're not an odd man out, then that's not normal when you think about it because. The people who are making it in the art world, the people who are are uh, becoming financially successful, are those artists who are applying and using all of the technolo technology, the internet, and everything. Isn't, isn't that right? Isn't that, isn't that what, what we're finding here? Yeah. Mm -mm. Well, I mean, I you think, need to take advantage of all the opportunities well, I, there is now. Yeah, at least, at least a younger your folks. Yeah, your uniqueness is what gets you getting getting yourself out there, so everybody can see your story and conveying your uniqueness through your story. Your story through your uniqueness is what's getting, you know. So that's uh, that's why you know I've, I've said I've said it before. I said this is the best time ever for artists. I it think really it is because. You can chart your own path. There's no gate. Kind of like it was back in the heyday when it was the, when the abstract artists, you know, and back in that time for them, that was their perfect time at that time. I think this new age that we're having now with the internet is that golden time for us at this point. 
you know, with, with this. Yeah. You can a new age for this. And you can be any kind of artist that, that, that you want to be. You know, you can be a representational artist. You can be an abstract artist. You can be a, a you just cartoon. You got to get out there and promote yourself. Yeah, you, you, know, you can be like, like uh, especially a lot of younger folks are really into, uh, uh, what's that Japanese song called? An anime. Yeah. Anime. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they're really into that. I mean, and there's there's just so, God, so many well, That's the areas. thing. Like now, now you're you're exposed to the whole world when you put your stuff on the internet. Before you were only able to expose yourself to whoever you could, you know, get uh, actual eyes on your work <laughs> at a gallery or right. at a museum or something or at your studio. Now you put it online and everybody in the whole world can see it. So your audience could be anywhere, and yeah. you know it's a lot easier to find people that are into whatever you do. Exactly. So it's more acceptable to have all, all different kinds of art. Like, I, I, was it our last episode or one before that when we were talking about, I tired of educating Clyde, talking about market niche? Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So now you can actually explore different niche and you can explore different, you know, different areas and, and, uh, and find, find a gathering. So yeah, it's best time ever for, you know, for artists. Okay, we're just about uh, done with this episode. However, Constance had a show this weekend, and I want to hear about the results of it. Was it a good show for you? It was pretty good. Uh, the traffic wasn't as, uh, as great as last year, but for as much traffic as there was, it was a pretty good show, yeah. I wore myself out, and I'm just exhausted, so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I was surprised that you showed up tonight. I really didn't expect you to be here tonight, you know. You came uh, home with a lot less stuff, right? <laughs> well, not I'm not cleaned out yet, no. <laughs> <laughs> but you have less than you had. <laughs> I have a little less than I had before, so yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. We had any announcements, any, any plans coming up here? No, not for me. Yeah. Mm -mm. No, okay. Well, I think I've already made this announcement once, but I'll make it again. If any of our listeners are over in Europe, in the uh, Zurich, Switzerland area, you know, uh, in the uh, the Art Box Gallery, my uh, my artwork is still in there because that's an an exhibition that's lasting the entire month of October. So there's still time to go uh, check it out and take a picture of yourself uh, in front of it and send it to me. I'd get a kick out of that. You got 10 more days. <laughs> yeah, about 10 more days here, yeah. And then mm -hmm. the, some new stuff is, I'm waiting on the results. It's a secret right now, but coming up in November and December, I got some things you know, <laughs> coming up here. Okay, I think that's going to be it for this episode, episode 18 of the Artist Friends Podcast for October the 21st. This is Clyde J. Cal saying goodbye. Bye-bye, Diane. Bye, Constance. Good night. Bye, guys. Bye, everyone. Bye-bye, everybody. The Artist Friends Podcast is produced and edited by Clyde J. Kale. Participating artists, Diane Hunt and Constant Brosnan and Clyde J. Kale. You can find more information about Diane Hunt at www dianehuntstudio.com Constance Brownsand at www.etsy.com forward slash shop forward slash c-b-r-o-s-n-a-n-s Clyde J. Kale at www.cjkaleartworks.com If you'd like to participate or appear as a guest on the Artist Friends Podcast please email CJ Kale at sign mystery dash OTR dot com. That's CJ Kale at sign mystery dash OTR dot com. This podcast is issued under the Creative Commons License 2019. Thank you for listening.